Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little. This is your daily Neo TA wrap, where we take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective, asking ourselves what happened today and what does it tell us about the coming ones. I do the show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, broadcast at before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube and under the channel L.A. Little. If you haven't subscribed and you want to, just reach up in the right-hand corner and do so. Anytime I push public content, you'll get a notification. There's other ways to get notifications, of course. One way is to join uh, the TA Today site. Another, uh, because there we have private Twitter. Here's the public Twitter if you want to subscribe to that. If you want to subscribe to uh, the site, if you want to look more into it, then just write me at this email address. Last night, uh, we had a, a problem with the distortion of the a voice and the video together. I apologize for that. Uh, hopefully tonight's going to be a little bit better. Uh, I had some issues last night and didn't realize it until after the fact. Thanks for uh, writing me if you did. Um, I do appreciate the feedback anytime uh, something isn't good or is good. Uh, posting uh, comments, uh, posting this, actually sharing this with Flickr, with uh, Twitter, with any of the number of uh, social media, Facebook, so forth. If you want to do that, you're more than welcome, and I would certainly appreciate that. Last night, I talked about a trade. I think it didn't get uh, shown, so I'm going to go over it again real quick uh, just to show, because we actually finished the trade up this morning, and, and show you that trade. And it had to, be, had to do with a DDD, which is uh, uh, on a huge run, on a short squeeze run. And I had marked in that morning, and it marked up a chart, and I could share the chart with you, but I'll essentially just draw it up for you again. I shared it with members on Twitter and told them where the buy point was. What I was looking at is I was looking at this area back here. You just had a huge run up from 17 to 19, the day, two days back. This is yesterday here, this is two days back, and then today is off the chart right now. That area that I'm showing you here, those two bars, that's where volume came in. So you, that, you know that's where the demand really came in. Got a little pullback and then took off again. That price point, 1803 on that bar, 1799 on that bar. So I, I drew in an 1808 number just above it so that I'd be aware. Well, what happens? The very first five minute bar on the day that we wanted to trade it. It traded down hard and fast on that first five minutes, got down to 1800. So 1800. Let's pull this over a little bit now and show the trade and actually tighten it up. So here's that big first five minute spike, and then it drifts around and then it comes down. And what does it do? It spikes down right here and tests that low. Now you're already, you know, a good hour into the trade here. And so you can't compare the volumes as much, but you got no volume comparatively, right? But the main thing is, is not only does it get under this bar, and I'll point them out with a pointer here for you, not only did it get under this bar and then do a hammer reversal, it also got under the bar prior, see the volume on that one compared to the volume that it did the hammer on, got underneath it, started up. Now, in neoclassical theory, we know that the ideal price point entry is the low of the bar prior. And because we know that and we get a hammer reversal and we're looking at an area that we know we want to buy, everything shapes up just right. We pull the trigger on this bar and it's straight up from there. Trailing stops. We don't have to worry about it. It gets on up there, gets to 1920. And then some folks uh, let it go at that point. I continued to hold it the rest of the night or the rest of the day, I should say. And if I drag this on over for the remainder of the day, it, it comes back up to test it one more time. So let's get rid of all this. Here's that spike high and you see the volume on the spike high. It comes back to test that spike high one more time right in here. Can't get over it. That's where I make my sell, take what I can get, right, and say, okay, that's the partial. I took two-thirds off there. Members, I don't know if they took the full two-thirds off or what. The target was 1970. The very three first five-minute bars this morning, we hit the 1970. You can see it pulls back right after that, although it does continue up. That was where I took the final profits and encouraged others to take it. 
As a matter of fact, this morning I tweeted about it here and said we're going to get up there and we should take profits there. It ended strong. It has another good bar and ends at the high. Now, if we go ahead and further and you know, do analysis on this, you had a spike bar here that's right up there, and you didn't test it, I don't believe, the rest of the day. Number there is 2065. The highest you got was 2064. My take is, is what will happen in the morning is this will spike and test it and probably pull back from there. And then at that point, it's going to set up a different trade. And for more on how that works, well, you need to be a member, I guess, because I'll be watching this and we'll be trying to trade it again. But these trades, and the point of showing this last night and again tonight, since it didn't come across last night well, uh, given the video problems, is that neoclassical works on any time frame. If you want a day trade, it, it gives you timing, right? It tells you where supply and demand is. It tells you what to expect. We know what those probabilities were, or at least we knew what those probabilities were, given the model when we made that entry back here on this bar. We knew the probabilities were high that this would be a success. We knew that our risk to reward was great. In other words, we had a high probability that this buy would work. And B, we didn't have to risk hardly anything, right? I mean, very little risk, potential large reward. And that's where you throw a bunch of money at something and you see if it works. Most of the time, it's going to work. And, and when I say most of the time, in this case, it's, uh, you know, the probabilities are up in the 60 plus percent, 65, 70 percent. So when you get that kind of probability, you throw a lot at it. That means you do it 10 times. You're going to win three out of the 10, seven out of 10, lose three of the others. When you have that much reward potential, you know, it's a no brainer. You throw money at it. So that's the trade. That was how that trade set up. Let's get on to the rest of the market here. Uh, I spent enough time on that. What happened today? Nothing. This market, you know, we had the firing of uh, uh, Kami at the FBI. Nobody cares. It just didn't matter. If we pull up the numbers here, you can see we finished green again. It just doesn't matter, folks. These markets still hanging at the highs. S&P trying to get over that 2400 level. It's sitting right at it tonight. We had the two negative signals on the S&P last night. Again, just didn't matter. Russell pops up nicely tonight, and we get a nice spike uh, in it. Let's look at the charts themselves, and let's start with that S&P 500. And if we look at it, so here, here's the two negatives last night that just simply didn't matter. One is you had a bearish reversal. So in other words, it goes and covers the entire body of the prior bar with a red bar which says it started at the top, finished at the bottom. That's a bearish reversal. You also had two days running failures, test failures at the highs, right? So two days test failures and you end up uh, bearish reversal. But again, just doesn't matter. You close it tonight at the highs, 2399.63, just under that 2400 level. It's gonna try to get over it tomorrow. It's set up to try and break it out. If it does, you could see a pretty good run because you've got a decent ABCD structure that's in place here, right? That to take it quite a ways. This, tack it onto there, it's going to be a big move if it happens. The targets on the weekly are about 2440, somewhere up in there if you do the ABCD structures over here. And so what it looks like to me is this thing is going to do its best to somehow get up and over. And the reason I'm thinking that tonight is A, the news that happened last night should have pushed this market down, it didn't. B, if you look at the rest of the indexes and what they did today, like the NDX itself, this, this chart could not get up and make new highs. That's the first time that's happened in, uh, oh, I don't know what, 10 bars here or so? I mean, I, I guess you had one here and you had one down here. So I offer this four week, almost four week run. You've had a couple instances that didn't happen. And what did they do? They rotated into other stuff. And one of the things they rotated into was the small caps. After the small caps, it came down, held, well, almost held. They just got under it. So again, I think we're kind of a, you know, the trend here has changed, but it doesn't mean that you can't get more of a run before it comes back. In other words, it was up on a steep thing, does a steep pullback, gets under 
this low just barely, which says that that up is probably sideways now. But the sideways is anywhere from up here all the way to the top now. So this still can rally a good decent amount here and allow the S&P to push higher and the NDX and the NASDAQ to sit there and do what? Go up and make new highs on the S&P, which is the only index that hasn't done it yet. And um, so anyway, that's the way it sets up, and that's part of the reason I'm thinking that tonight. But if you saw the sector rotation, uh, you, the rotation that I saw today was over into the energy space, for example, where energy got a nice little pop today comparatively. Uh, we saw Boeing get hit. That knocked the industrials down a little bit. Uh, we saw the technology stocks uh, struggling, big cap technology. But the ETF itself, the XLK, continued higher. Healthcare, which is another large component, uh, tried to push down today. Uh, discretionary, which has been very strong, also tried to push down today. But folks, these markets just don't want to give very much up. They keep hanging at the highs. They keep pushing uh, to get higher. And if we go to the semiconductors, which were the standout today, these things just blew over the swing point high. And now they've got another ABCD structure to the top side. This sector uh, won't quit. ABCD structures from there and back up. So you got a ways to go here uh, if, in fact, it wants to make the further run. What does it look like to me? It looks like to me that this market isn't done, folks. For all the fear, for all the hand-wringing, it doesn't matter. Tops take time. This top's going to take time as well. And if you look over in Europe, Europe's not ready to give it up either. And given all of that, you got to expect they're going to try to push again. Have yourself a great one. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Good night.